All right, guys, you gotta give me a couple minutes to explain this idea. You gotta hear me out on this, you guys. I think this is gonna be the next business plan, the next business thing. Goodness gracious, I'm so excited, I can't talk. So give me a couple minutes and I will explain to you what it is. Now, I realize my truck is dirty and I'm waiting in line at the Blue Beacon. Well, I'm not waiting in line, but I'm next. I'm waiting to, uh, I should probably pull forward. But that's beside the point. So this business idea. Now, let's say you have about $100,000 to invest, okay? Actually, I'm gonna, let's pull forward real fast. Okay, there you go. So now I pull forward. Now, where was I? You have $100,000 to invest, right? You wanna start some kind of business. Now, let me tell you what you should do with that $100,000, okay? First thing, you go out and you buy, okay? Now, you gotta have an open mind for this, okay? First thing you gotta go do is you go out and buy three cars, okay? Now, I definitely want you guys to keep it, to ha please have an open mind on this. Three cars. Your first car is gonna be about a newer car that's gonna be about $30,000. Your second car is gonna be a used car that's gonna be about $15,000. And your last car is gonna be a cheap beater car that like is just safe enough, just legal enough. It could be even salvage title for five grand. So you take that money and you invest in those three cars. 30 plus five plus 15, that's about $50,000. So that'll give you about $50,000 extra left over from that original 100 to save for your operating expenses and any, anything like that. Now, what do you do with those three cars? You would want to Put a driver, uh, three drivers actually, on all three cars, okay? And then what you do is you go get those cars inspected and you add them to Lyft. And those three drivers are going to drive your three cars for Lyft. If your mind is blowing up about that genius right now, dude, I know. I'm joking, obviously. <laughs> Don't do that. But what I want you to think about is the parallels, okay? Now imagine that those three cars are trucks and trailers and hotshots. Imagine those three drivers are still drivers. And imagine that Lyft is truck stop and DAT. Now that starts to switch up your perspective. So in this hypothetical scenario of the Lyft company with three cars, right? What would be the problems? One, why on earth would a driver drive your car when they could just go out and get their own? Same thing with Hot Shop. Why would a driver drive your truck when he could just go get a lease from Enterprise and for basically very little money down with no credit check? Or if they have good credit and they have a little bit of money, they could just go buy a new truck. Two, we've already heard many times that Lyft drivers are barely making minimum wage. We've already had many times in the reports, in the news, you can hear that. Well, how much do you think a driver makes on a hot shot? Do you think the driver is going to be willing to put in the sacrifice that's required to make it to go several weeks on the road? It's not like the pay is $2 a mile as a company driver or a dollar a mile is going to be. As a company driver, you're either paid per mile or per percentage. Your percentage as a company driver is probably 25%. And seeing as how the profit margin on a hotshot rig is about 30%, you're left with almost nothing. Okay, let's say you pay per mile. Same thing. You're gonna pay 50 cents a mile to the driver because the truck runs at about, about a buck 50 a mile. Well, there you go. If you're paying your driver 50 cents and the truck operating cost is about a dollar a mile, why on earth would a driver be cramped in the back seat for 50 cents a mile when he could just go drive semi instead? Semis right now pay 50 cents a mile. So that's the second one. Like, how much are you gonna pay them? How much are you actually gonna be left with? And then last but not least, just like in this hypothetical lift scenario, you're extremely heavily, solely dependent on the lift app, on the lift service to provide you with the customers to deliver the, you know, to use your cars to deliver them. How is that any different with Hotshot? We're extremely dependent on Truck Stop and DAT. 
extremely dependent. Guys, the problem with building a fleet, the problem with hiring drivers to drive your trucks is it's just not profitable on a small scale. Mainly because the free market as a whole has decided the way it's working right now is by far the most efficient like way, the most efficient process. And what do I mean by that? Let's say you have a, this, I'm gonna put it right here on the screen. So let's say you have this stack, okay? At the very top of this stack, you have a shipper with a load. Right under that, you have a broker. And right under that, you have the load board. And the very, very first thing right under that is you have an individual owner operator with the bare minimum expenses with the maybe the oldest truck and so he can haul it the cheapest possible rate that's how much he'll charge the least amount because there's no middle men there's no middle people between the load board and the owner operator there's nothing right there in the middle the stack is as efficient as it could possibly be it cannot get any more efficient than how it currently is which is you got an owner operator at the very bottom and he gets loads directly from the load board that Oh, the truck is pulling forward. Okay, I'm next. Let's pull forward. So, like I was saying, the process is as efficient as it could possibly be right now. The very bottom, you have individual owner operators getting loads directly from the load board, which brokers are posting onto the load board, which shippers are giving to the brokers. So, the only thing that you can do differently is try to avoid the you know the one right above you which is the load board which is you maybe go directly with a broker the other thing you can do is go directly with a shipper but because the capacity of hot shots is so small in general and the market is so like tiny compared to the overall it's really hard to avoid the broker it's really it's I mean you know I've been doing it for a while so I've been doing this for almost four years now so I do have plenty of brokers that call me direct so you can go do that and that's why it's as efficient as it gets because there's no more other middle people to cut out. It will not make it more fuel efficient. And this is where if you notice the genius of Uber Freight, they are a load board and a brokerage in one. And so unless your plan is to open the next Uber Freight, I really do think that jumping into this, let's say I get so many emails about, hey, I have $100,000, I wanna buy a truck or two and get started. It's gonna be a rough go. It's gonna be a tough battle. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Do you disagree? Do you agree? Is this not a good market to have a business in or is this a good market or challenging market to grow your business in? What do you think about my lift parallel example? What do you guys think? I just look forward to hearing from you guys because I just get so many people that say, hey, I want this passive income. How can, can I do it with hotshot trucking? And my answer generally is no. So I look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.